all right in the previous part i remember saying that i was going to teach a much better way of handling our route functions and obviously that is what i'm going to be doing in this video and i'm also going to introduce a package called jwt which at the end of the day is going to help us improve or increase the security of our authentication system in your application and it's also going to help prevent other users from accessing the features of other users which in general improve security so let's just dive right into it okay so let's first of all introduce the concept of jwt so basically jwt is is a package that assigns a token or a key to each and every single user and then using this key we can be able to verify which user is which user and at the end of the day prevent a user from performing an authorized an unauthorized action towards another user in general and at the end of the day it also helps us pass in certain information from component to component regardless of where we use them in i would i would inside this project i'm i'm going to give example use cases of what i just talked about and that is, so that's what is going to make you understand what i just said in general okay so let let me split this terminal real quick and then i'm going to take this off and then i'm going to say npmi json web token so npmi json web token and then we should have it install then while we are calling uh while we are importing it we can import it as jwt rather so whenever you're installing you install it as json web token and then when you import you import and you can name the variable jwt all right so we require this we require this from json web token okay i think i think this is uh yeah i think that's it let me check the packet or json yeah that's it we, we just require from there so so yes now that we have jwt being required from its specific package source we are going to go into the login function and then right after we perform our comparisons we want to do we want to call this variable say let's say const token usually some call it access tokens but let's not waste too much time so const token then we're going to call the jwt package and then we bring dot sign and then we can have okay obviously we are not done with what we're doing okay so I cannot find json web token json web token okay json web token that is what we are supposed to import okay so it now works so so as you, as you can see if i bring this we have sign so sign and then inside this sign inside this sign we can pass a few things inside right so the first thing we can pass in here is basically what are we trying to sign so we can say that we are signing the user id and then we are going to say that this user id is going to be coming from the user that we were able to find here with the email dot id so we can say user dot id which which obviously is the id property here so the id property is obviously going to be coming from this side as you can see inside the document so the side and then the next thing that we are going to pass is is admin because at the end of the day we want to be able to check if the person is an admin before we allow the person to perform certain actions in to and from the database in our e-commerce application right so let us go back to 
inside and then ensure that they so ensure that its admin is being passed okay so we have user dot um dot is admin is admin okay so we have this being set and then the next thing or the next argument we can pass through is process dot env dot jwt keys j w t key okay that is basically your environment variable you can create to store your jwt key in. and the funny thing is jwt keys don't they don't have to be something specific or something you generate from somewhere that belongs to only you but it's actually it can be anything at all as long as there's something to fill up the space that's what it is so uh, i'm going to go into my env file and then i'm going to create the same env variable that i created there i'm going to say jwt key then i'm going to give i could even say a there's my jwt key but i mean obviously we want to be secure and so you can just write in anything it doesn't make any change it doesn't change anything so you just need to make sure you remember this when you're deploying but even if you're deploying you can still put it in any value yeah you can still put it in the value and it will work because i mean jwt keys are not something that is assigned to one specific person that you need to keep or keep or something right but you still need to keep safe at the end of the day because you don't want it to get accessed by third parties so um we so over here inside so over here we have passed it and then the next thing we can do which is optional is we can say expires in so we can set an ex an expiry date for our tokens and i can say this should be maximum five days i can say this could be five days but yeah i mean i don't like to set expiry dates to my jwt keys but i mean for security reasons do you need to set them just in case maybe within that time period it's a different person that is trying to access the account the person would have to log in again basically so at the end of the day yes also improve security so let's keep it right now we have this token being signed how do we bring it out we can so over here we can see over here we can basically bring out this so you see over here we are bringing out the full user and that includes our password so the same deconstruction that we did over here we can do the same deconstruction here so we can just copy this and bring it here we can copy this and bring it here and then so we take password and then we take info and then we take those things from user and then we take it from the document property of it right now these are both they are all the same thing right but we, we need to we need to be able to change or we need to be able to change at least one of their names right so what we can do right now is we can we, we we could just take this off we could take this off and then set this to request dot body we could set this to request dot body dot email and then we could also set this to request dot body dot password and then yeah everything should be fine okay so once that is done and we log in we should be able to generate the token now when we generate the token we want to be able to bring out the token or log the token out or send the token out as a response right one thing we could do is we could just make this another object and then with a comma and then we have in so we could we could see this one should be info and token but if i log in we will see a difference if i log in we'll see something here let let us go into one workspace so i'm going to go into search and digital solutions workspace and then okay then i am 
obviously going to go into the um, no yeah i'm going to go into the login so login inside the body we should have some predefined we should have some predefined login details that we had back then okay so we could okay this one is obviously going to give us an error because i don't think we have a user with this email in a database yeah so email does not exist so yes so what we'll do is we take this off i think we ha rather have this user so as you can see we have data coming out with the info and then coming out with the token but as you can see they're all separate things all together but at the end of the day we want to be able to put the token inside the same info so what we can do is we can deconstruct the info that we are getting here and then that should be able to give us what we are looking for so i can come and then deconstruct it and then we could send that back as a login we just log we send that login and then we should be able to have it in there okay something seems to be wrong somewhere okay there's nothing wrong all right all right there was nothing wrong. so as you can see this is what we were able to achieve so it works as we expect now that is the lesson for jwt and then we can now move on to handling our route functions in a much better way now we can create something called controllers right we can create something called controllers so we can come here and create a folder called controllers and then we can create our first controller which is auth dot controller dot js in a little bit more advanced uh, repos sometimes sometimes depends on the company but in a little bit more advanced repos you see people using services and then services is basically just using the single responsibility principle to um, handle the f uh, the main things that you would have performed in the controller but put them in a different module and then import in the controller to use at the end of the day which in a way simplifies things and makes your application more scalable but i mean since this is basically a beginner's tutorial i would not want to go that deep so inside our auth controllers what we can do is we can create we can create our various functions so we can say register then we can create this uh, a async okay no need to recreate the async and await functions here what we can do is we can go into the routes and then we can just copy this we can copy this whole section copy this section so we can just cut it off and then put it here okay and then it has been created we can do the same thing for login we can do the same thing for login okay so i'm gonna go into login and start copying from here okay okay so i'll, I'll cut this and then inside I'll just paste it okay now that we have these two bad boys here we are definitely going to have to import certain packages because we've not imported them hence they're going to worry us in the future if we don't so what is the first package we want to import we can come here bcrypt and then import bcrypt right so let us go and import these packages or we can just copy so some of the packages you can just copy from here or cut them from here so i can cut this and put it in here okay we have jwt in here i can cut this section too I can cut this and then i could put it here 
then for the user we can cut this and then put here and then yeah we'll put it here so the at the end of the day we want to make sure that this is the right path to our file so we so model and then user dot model dot js okay then we already have bcrypt imported imported we have jwt imported over here and then we can now send out a token through the data that we're receiving now what we can do next is to export these functions so export um so yes in common js we would have to use uh, module.export actually module.exports then we can export register then we can export login yes then now that we've been able to export them no need to re-import them manually we can just so we can just uh, call them out like this and then call this one to out like this okay then we can just set this extension just to be safe so if i try to log in as a test to see if these things are working let me try to log in one more time okay so it still works like it's supposed to and here my friends is a nicer or much better way to organize your route functions thank you very much for watching this part of the video in the next part of the video we are going to be handling crowd operations inside our e-commerce backend and also how to do your verify token which is going to at the end of the day perform the actions that i mentioned from the beginning which i stated in which i stated that some certain users can't perform certain actions on another users that are unauthorized so yes thank you very much for staying with me in this video hopefully i'll see you in the next part